That's the normal wallet. I'm gonna show you how to make it. So if you follow me over on Instagram, you will probably have seen that I've got a challenge going on right now called the Nomo Wallet Challenge. That's the Nomo Wallet. So if you go to my website, link in the description below, you can download the plans for this wallet, make it, post it, tag me, hashtag Nomo Wallet Challenge, and you'll have a chance to win 14 individual prizes. So I've got vendors from all over the world who, have, who are giving prizes to this. At the end of the month, contest ends. The first week of June, they're gonna select their favorite and you get their prize. So go to the website, see all the great prizes, and if you haven't got the pattern yet, go and get it. You're not gonna to wanna to miss out on them. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I make a Nomo wallet, and maybe that will help some of you along the way in this challenge. So I'm going to be doing a, uh, a two-tone Nomo wallet for this one. So the interior is gonna be this beautiful leather from Baltic Leather Supply. This is the uh, Lithuanica. I don't know. There's, there'll be a link in the description for this. This is like a Butero. Really nice, solid, kind of semi-gloss leather. Perfect for wallets. I'm gonna be pairing this with my absolute favorite, which is the glazed harness from Wicked and Craig. Like, just look at that. I don't even need to say anything else. This leather kind of sells itself. So two-tone glazed harness, natural, and then this like brown lithica. So I've got little pieces already trimmed out. And then I'm going to use this beautiful 0.6 millimeter green Ritza Tiger Thread. So I've got my pattern printed out and then stuck to this Mylar sheet. This is really good for kind of semi-permanent patterns because the edge doesn't deform as you trace it. So this is a really good option. I'm gonna do a video on these, uh, these Mylar templates because they do really well if you don't have dies made for your, uh, for your pieces, which I don't yet. So I've rough cut a piece off of the hide just to make it easier to trace out. And then I usually just hold it down, but sometimes this leather can be a little slick. So I'll just hold it down with a weight. So cutting out the ex main exterior bit, I like to go to the skiving knife. And then this curved cut, I'm just using the first, you know, five, six mil of the, of the blade. Just follow it around. So there you go. Doesn't take long when you're using the skiving knife. If you're not comfortable with that, or you just don't want to, ruler and then an X-Acto knife works just as well. If not, a little bit, uh, I'd almost say a little bit more intricate because you do have to make sure everything's lined up properly. But this is all fairly straightforward, basic stuff to keep those skills sharp for the more intricate work. So once every piece is trimmed out, finish off the top of our exterior piece. This is some 320. Because this edges straight off the knife. It doesn't need much work. You're also going to do that to the top portion. So don't worry about the rounded corners. We're just more worried about the straight part. So I just finished the whole top. Then we'll come in with our bevel. And then if you're working on the same surface that you do all of your cutting, 
suggest getting a nice surface to put your workpiece on so that you don't end up scratching that good surface. Especially on this front piece with a nice shiny leather. We don't want that getting scratched up. So then we're just coming in with our little squeeze bottle of tokenol. Get this edge nice and saturated. Canvas cloth. And I'll try to show you this edge. There you can see all this is was 320 and then one round of tokenol. And it is perfectly smooth. I find for single edges like this, you don't need to do any more work than that. So same thing with our interior piece. We're just we're gonna finish this top because it's easier to do it now than after the fact. I'm just gonna go right edge to edge, even though we're gonna round these corners afterwards, we'll feather it back in, but the main portion of this top interior piece will be done and finished properly. So there we go. Pieces cut, tops of the interior and exterior are both ready to go. Now I'm going to add my stamps. Okay, so here we go. I've got my one ton Arbor Press. This is nothing fancy. It's the basic ones you find at most uh, automotive stores or wherever you get yours. You can even find these things on Amazon. One thing I did add and purchase was this little magnetic protector that goes on the bottom of the actual um, press shaft. So adds just a little bit more surface here when you're working with your stamps. I find it makes a big difference. Uh, this is from RSFX Laser Products. I'll have a link in the description so you can check those out. The other thing I've got are my little setup blocks. So I space my logo in half an inch from the edge. So I grab each one of those that are half an inch and then I use my large block against the side and then I use my other stamp on the bottom and then just press everything into the corner and then I know it's lined up perfectly. Just lean down a little bit, not too much pressure. I get a nice clean stamp. Do the same thing for the other side. Again, it's not too much pressure. Nice clean stamp. Okay, so now we're gonna mark everything out for our gluing. Taking our two finished pieces, I'm going to lay my exterior onto the front. And give myself a little mark right here. Same thing on this side. And that's going to tell me where to put the glue. I like using this leather roughing tool to scratch up the surface. You can also just use sandpaper or your awl. You don't need this fancy tool. I find it just incredibly easy and fast to use. I think this thing was like 20 bucks. So you can see it's just that easy. Now we also need to get a reference for our interior with where to glue. Now, one thing I do, you can see on the pattern, I've got my stitching going all the way up. If you wanna stop at the pocket, you can. I find this part gets a little flimsy though, which is why I run the stitch all the way up. So I want to glue right up to where I'm gonna start stitching. So I just give myself a little mark. 
And then to get this side, I just roughly mark where I need to stop my glue. So I have my glue in one of these little uh, kind of needle, not, it's not quite a needle tip, but pointy tip bottles. So let that sit for just a minute and then we'll press this piece together. So once our center is glued up, I like doing one side at a time. So I'm, glue, I'm going to glue down this portion first, make sure that's nice and secure, and then add glue here and wrap it around. I'm just going to line it up here so I know where to start my glue. Again, just going to let that sit, get these pieces stuck together. So once I have this side glued up, I like to let this glue sit for five minutes or so, just so that it tacks up more, so that when I go to fold this over, it doesn't end up pulling away from the edge. So now that other side is good and secure. It's not going to move on me. So now we just add some glue to this side, let it tack up, and then we'll be able to press our sides together. Okay, glue is set. We come over to my corner, make sure that's lined up, give it a bit of a press, and then make sure my ends right there line up perfectly. Really press that edge down. And then make sure your bottom is all lined up, which it should be. Press that down. Now, if you do end up with a bit of a gap there, that's fine. We're going to round this over. This gap will happen if, depending on the leather thicknesses. So I've made this, ex the pattern has this exterior piece sized so that anything up to maybe, um, maybe a millimeter and a half will fit within this. If your leather's thicker than that, then this edge, then these parts won't line up and they'll be short of your interior piece. That's why I've included that trim allowance. So this is that variable that is impacted by the thickness of the leather you're using. But you should be using the leather that's around the range that this will pattern will work just fine with no issues. So I'm just going to let this sit for a little bit to tack up, round over the three corners. So to round over the corners, I use this little anvil as my guide. You could also use a, uh, a washer the appropriate size. Then I just bring it over to the edge using my blade as a registration point to make sure it's flat against the edge. And then taking very small cuts, aiming to keep this edge obviously nice and square. You can see it doesn't take much effort and you can get it actually you can get a very smooth rounded edge which doesn't need much extra work it is important to have a very sharp blade when you're doing this then doing our corner here I make sure it's lined up with the bottom and then my edge here since it's not going to lie flat I just kind of eyeball it I'm trying to look straight down so that when I come through here 
my knife will be registered on here and it'll be flat with my edge. And that will just need a bit of work to get that corner cleaned up. So we'll get those edges round, roughly rounded over, get this edge sanded down roughly, and then we'll start stitching. So to clean up these edges, I'm gonna use my little hand plane here. I, have, I've, I got it elevated on this little glass block so that my, uh, my wallet piece is, is centered within the block. If it's too flat, it's not gonna cut the whole surface. So make sure this thing's nice and sharp. I've already got it set up to take a nice cut. And this is really great for helping to round over those ed that edge, especially this one. Okay, so there we go. So now we are all flush, cleaned up. Now I can add my stitch line. So I'm gonna be using my Japanese style diamond pricking irons for this one. It's a wider stitch spacing at five millimeters. So for that, I'm going to set my dividers to four millimeters. If I was using my finer irons that are 3.38, I would set this to three millimeters. So this is why I do that rough sand or prep first so that my corner is nice and round and I know my profile isn't gonna change after I'm done stitching the wallet. And I'll just come up just a little bit here to where I've glued this down. I'm gonna make my mark right up to there so I know where to stop my irons. So I'm giving it a light tap, just basically going through that top layer. And that's it. The reason I do this, because I find sometimes, if I already hit all the way through, it opens up that hole to the point where I can actually have some movement in my iron. And then it's, it sometimes affects the stitch space in. Just to set that space in before you come in and hammer this all the way through. Before I move on, let's hammer down I find this ends up creating a neater stitch versus when those holes are all pressed out. Especially with these larger irons, they create a much larger hole. To measure out my stitch spacing, and set your wallet on the edge of your ruler and then just walk it out until it reaches the end of the stitch line. So mine ends at about six and a half inches. So I'm gonna say seven. So all I'm gonna do is take some thread up to seven inches and then have five lengths of seven inches. So that gives me the exact thread length that I'm gonna need to stitch that whole wallet. And to thread my needles, I do a double, a double pierce and I leave a longer tail at the end. So bring it to the end, pull it through, and I've got two knots there that I know aren't going to come loose mid stitch. So I like doing a double back stitch. So the only the process here is I'm just stitching away from me. My holes are facing up and away. Make sure my needles are even. There's no cast when I'm stitching away from me. 
just use my right needle to open up that thread, that hole, come through, no cast. I pull the thread straight, not on an angle, I pull it straight. And then as I stitch forward, I lay my threads or I lay my stitch on top of the existing ones. So I use my right needle to come on top of that thread, try to press it down a little bit. And then needle comes up underneath and it's gonna guide this thread so that it sits right on top. Same thing on the back. I'm just guiding this thread so it sits on top. Pull it tight. And then it's just stitching as normal. And then just pull that thread just tight enough. You want it just to sink into the leather. You don't want to pull it too tight. And when you're looking down, you should see the thread just coming over the leather in the exact same amount. So each whole segment should look the same. If you have your wallet in front of you, look down. Each one of those threads that you can see should be the same height. If they're not, it means you're pulling too tight with your left or right hand. our thread all tap down nice clean stitch on the back as well so now we can take care of these edges so I'm going to get a quick edge on this wallet if you see my latest series I just finished up on edge finishing I don't need to show you it again because I've got a whole video dedicated to that process. So if you want to see that, I'll include a link somewhere up here. You can go watch that, but I'll get this done and then show you, I'll show you the edge. Okay, so that's it. That's how I make the normal wallet. If you have any questions, leave it in the description below. Here's how the edge turned out. Not bad, still needs a little bit more work. If you need any of the tools or materials that I've shown in this video, check the description below. Uh, you'll find all of my Amazon links, um, which are affiliate links, which means I get a very small portion. I've also listed a few of the non-affiliate links for suppliers specific uh, to this video. I also have to give a quick shout out to Andrew. Andrew, I was talking to your dad the other day. He said, you watch my videos. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments or message, tell your dad, he'll tell me, go direct. Like I said, this is part of my Instagram challenge that's going on. So if you haven't gone over there, norfolk.handmade and check out what I've got going on over there. You can also get the pattern on my website, norfolkhandmade.com. It's five bucks, it's cheap, it's worth it. This challenge is amazing. I've also got a bunch of wallets that are ready to ship. They're shipping out. I ship out every Wednesday and Fridays. So if you get your order in before noon on Wednesdays and before noon on Fridays, it's going out the same day. I've also just made a big update to the website. I've been, I was able to actually lower my price in, not something you hear these days. I also include shipping on all purchases over $75. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, like, subscribe. The vast majority of you that are watching this right now are not subscribed. Subscribe, it helps a lot. Hit the little bell notification icon to be notified when I post my next video, which is Fridays at 4 p.m. consistently, hopefully, not guaranteed, but that's the plan. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.